Hello folks, this is Ray Baxter and today I'm going to discuss how we can use Zoom with a music listening club. Another title is Don't Let Something Like a COVID-19 Pandemic Stop You From Enjoying Music with Friends. A little background first. I've been a music collector, records, cassette tapes, compact discs, digital for over 60 years, so I've accumulated a pretty nice collection. And within the last 10, 15 years, I've been a member of two music listening clubs. Uh, the first one is, I've been with the longest is known as RCA, stands for not the record label, but Record Collectors of Arizona. We're based in Phoenix and would meet on a bi-weekly basis in a couple of different meeting rooms. And we'd play uh, CDs and 45 RPM records that uh, members would bring in. And the focus, I have to admit, was uh, mostly on the vocal groups of the 50s and early 60s, uh, mostly the obscure sounds. And a typical meeting had 10 to 15 attendees, and we might last uh, just under three hours, say two and a half hours on a Thursday night. The other club I, uh, that was started maybe four or five years ago, local to where I live, is known as the Payson Music Club. And this group only meets monthly and has only eight or fewer members showing up but we play all types of popular music uh, rock country folk music blues uh, early r b uh, anything from the late 1970s up to contemporary artists of today and uh, these this group uses not only cds but music that's been loaded on flash drives smartphones and tablets uh, the benefit of the pace and music club is we meet at members homes and this gives us the added advantage of being able to view music related YouTube videos. COVID-19 changes everything. Fast forward to the first quarter of 2020 and thanks to COVID-19 and social distancing, we no longer can meet in person. And we're being confined to our homes pretty much eliminates the, the camaraderie these meetings provided where like-minded people that have a similar passion for certain types of music would be able to meet and discuss it and showcase new things we learned all that was gone so uh, as we started using video conferencing tools to communicate in the business world as well as socially I've come to the realization that Zoom could work to replace the in-person music meetings my friends and I were missing. Here's what we do. I call this our best practices. So first off, whoever's going to host a meeting would should really need to, to purchase a Zoom Pro account. This runs about $15 a month. Uh, but with this, the meetings last longer than 40 minutes, which is the limit for the free account when three or more attend. Now, it's true, I know of some people that use a free account and every 40 minutes, everybody has to sign off and then re-sign in. That obviously is not efficient and it kind of takes away from the, the enjoyment when you're right in the middle of something and then you have to sign off. So definitely getting a pro account for only $15 a month is the way to go. So whoever the host is going to be creates a reoccurring meeting ID and password for the participants to use. Uh, I typically provide an email with a link which will get the user into the waiting room and then be admitted. Uh, I use the same link over and over each time. So this way, uh, only the members just have to worry about saving it somewhere once and being able to access it again easily. Now, the so host has several other settings they control. Some of these include, uh, for sure, in our music sharing, we have to click on allowing others to share their screen. For some reason that comes in not automatically set up by Zoom. So that's the job of the host to ensure that others will be allowed to share their screen. And then uh, the host may at different times optionally choose to mute somebody's microphone. Let's say they hear, you know, dogs barking in the background or somebody's phone ringing. Uh, let's mute that person's microphone so it doesn't interrupt for the rest of us. Also, um, a habit that I get into with larger meetings like the computer club I host is about three, two to three minutes after the meeting starts, I lock the meeting, which so means nobody can be arriving late. Uh, number one, we don't get the interruptions. And number two, I'm teaching punctuality. How about that? All right, the Boy Scout motto holds true today. Be prepared. So before the meeting starts, 
you as a user or as a as a participant in these sessions should have created uh, your own new folder in your music library with copies of the mp3 songs you plan to play that night so when it's your turn you just click on the song and your computer music app will play if it's windows it's probably groove apple would probably be itunes uh, likewise if you're playing a cd from the optical drive have the album queued up so all you need to do is click on the song you want to play and if, again if you have a windows computer windows media player should kick in and play that selection for you and if playing songs from a music streaming service then have the app already opened with the first song ready to play if you'll be playing youtube videos there are steps you can take here as well before it's your turn to eliminate the waste of time while searching for a specific clip you saw it one time but now you can't remember where it was exactly so there's two ways you can speed up the process one is to open up multiple tabs in your browser, so each one will have the video set to play uh, another way you can handle this is type the url of the website that you want to go to into a word processing document like word or wordpad and then use Control plus click to start that particular video here's something i think is important it's improving your computer's capability a music club session is more demanding on your computer's resources than just meeting and talking with family and friends uh, because during a music club session uh, the following are often either open or being used at the same time certainly screen sharing uh, the using a brower and playing videos the playing audio files and compact discs and then the host has even a few more processing demands so what to do uh, rather than buying a new computer it's amazing what a few cho uh, choices you can make what i'm going to mention now will really improve your computer's capability uh, the first and always the least expensive way to really get more power out of your computer is to increase the ram the random access memory to the computer's allowable maximum there are websites that can go to crucial.com is one that comes to mind where it'll scan your computer then tell you how much ram you have and what the allowable maximum is that your computer can take another advantage is if you're using an older hard disk drive replace it with a newer solid state drive these have come way down in price in the last few years and it's a very very worthwhile investment and if possible connect directly to the router with an ethernet cable instead of the slower wi-fi uh, this makes a, a very big difference and let's say you have a newer computer that doesn't have the old-fashioned ethernet jack well they actually sell a usb adapter that are available for these newer computers and you want to improve the sound quality let's face it the sound you'll be hearing is only as good as your speakers so if you are listening with the tiny speakers in a laptop you will get much more enjoyment by spending a few dollars and investing in speakers that will plug into the computer's audio jack headphones are a great example these come in several styles and include bluetooth but i sometimes caution that bluetooth uses additional computer resources which depending on your computer may be a drain causing the computer to run slower particularly if you're the host you can get a sound bar one of these uh, encasements that has several small multiple speakers in a row housed in one unit but give out incredibly good sound and last but not least are external speakers which can just be two high quality speakers or can also include a subway all right so now we have all that out of the way here's what we do when it's your turn you move your mouse pointer toward the bottom of the monitor so the zoom icons will appear then click on the green share screen which allows you to see your computer screen and any other open applications at the bottom of the screen towards the center in the left side are two blank check boxes if you'll only be playing audio files the words that say share computer sound should be checked uh, if you'll also be playing youtube videos then you want to click the one that says optimize screen sharing for video clip and this will automatically check the share computer sound as well and let me mention something that's kind of important this optimize button for videos 
while it enhances the clips to ensure that the video is synced with both the sound and the video aspect. But at times it tends to distort any typed words that appear on the screen. And to, when I say distort, I mean to the point where they're practically unreadable. So keep this in mind if there ever is a time when you may need to go back to uncheck this box if reading what is on the screen is important at that particular moment. When all this is done, you click on the word share, which is in a blue box. Now all the other participants will see your computer screen. You then navigate to your source for audio or video, whatever you're going to be playing, and then begin to play that music and all people in the session will be able to hear and or see the, the video that you're playing and hear the music that you're playing. Now as a point of notice, the, the clubs I host, we go on the assumption that most song selections are less than four minutes in length. And to allow the process to move along faster, and when it's your turn, you get two songs to play. Uh, if the user wants to play an eight minute song, that is fine, but we, you may want to consider and count that as two plays. Okay, so when your songs are finished, make sure you stop or pause the application being used so it's not going to continue into the next selection and cause a problem. And then move your mouse towards the top of the screen, click on the red icon with the word stop share, which does what it says and brings you back to the Zoom screen. When it's your turn next to share, follow the same instructions, the same steps, and note that the box you checked previously, previously have remained that way. Okay, folks, now that we're done with the PowerPoint presentation, I'm going to take a few minutes just to see if I can show you some of the points I was trying to express, uh, particularly when it comes to sharing this screen. So let's say I'm at the music club and it's my turn to make the presentation with my songs and or videos. So the first thing I'm going to do is share my screen. Now, if you look at the lower portion of the Zoom screen, there's a little green icon that says share screen. And uh, when you do that, uh, you get this box that opens up. I'm gonna to have to show that to you in a slightly different format here. Uh, it's a Word document. Let me move this out of the way. So this is what will appear and you have to click on this blue button that says share to activate it. But before you do that, you want to click, if you're playing only audio files, the words next to the word share computer sound. And if you'll be playing audio and video, then you wanna put a check mark in the optimized screen sharing for video. And when you click on that box, it puts a check mark in both of these. Now, as I pointed out before, the optimized screen sharing for video clip has one negative and that any text that's on the screen for the most part will be very, very difficult, almost impossible to read. So uh, most of the time if you're playing videos, there is nothing to read. You want to watch the video and it's better if it's in sync. So by all means, most of the time I do check that box. And once those boxes are checked, then we click on this blue button over here that says share. So let me now go back and, uh, so if I start that again for the uh, share screen, I'm going to put a check mark in the optimize and the share computer, and then I'm going to click on share. And lo and behold, um, I have the uh, back to my screen now where you folks can see my desktop. And uh, this little here, I can move it up. This is where the I'll, I'll stop sharing later on. Anyway, right now I'm sharing my screen, which means everybody in the meeting can see what's on my computer. And that's my turn to play. I've already prepared my song. So I, all I need to do is go down to File Explorer, click on that, and here's a folder where I have some songs by uh, Dion. And then I do a comparison as an example of the song Rags to Riches, play one version by the great Tony Bennett, and another one by Jackie Wilson before he went solo when he was singing with a vocal group called the Dominoes. Now for the purposes of this, I'm not gonna play any audio. Uh, I may want to be uploading this to YouTube and they sometimes have a strict policy on what can and cannot be included song-wise. So to play it safe, I'm just showing you 
how I have it set up, but I won't be playing any music in this video. And so after I played my couple of songs, like I'll, I'll, I'll start one, I won't have any volume on it. I'll start that. It opens up the Groove music app and you can see by the counter, it's starting to play Rags to Riches by uh, Tony Bennett. And at some point it'll get to the end. And when it's at the end, uh, I will make sure I've paused or stopped the playing so it doesn't carry over to the next song. And then um, close this down. And if that was my second song, my last song, then I would click on stop sharing and uh, go back and let the next person take their turn. Likewise, if this was my turn and I wanted to play something, uh, a video, I'd open up the browser that I'm using. In this case, I use the Chrome browser, even though I'm a fan of Edge, I use the Chrome browser because uh, they're the ones who own YouTube. So it'll make it easier. And if you look at the top here, you can see, again, let me move this out of the way that um, I have three tabs already open. So these are the three videos I'm gonna be playing at some point during the evening. Uh, right now I have uh, little Brenda Lee when she was eight years old doing the song Jambalaya. And then uh, another one I like to show, often show is Ed Sheeran visited Tuscany, Italy and went to Andrea Bocelli's home. And there they did a, a duet with the song Perfect that Ed Sheeran wrote, uh, I think the, Con contrast of the two voices was is phenomenal and similar to that uh adele uh all i ask a very famous song by adele well, she did that at a concert and at a different point in time bruno mars did that song in one of his concerts and some phenomenal editor was able to take the two concerts concerts meld them together to make it sound like they were singing a duet together so these are the kinds of music videos that you'll find on YouTube and the kind I like to play just to show in general comparisons between voices and people. So again, when I would be done with my video, it would might be over at, you know, at the end here. And then I would uh, make sure I click the pause button to stop it and I'm done. And then as I'm ready to go back, I bring it back and go to where it says stop share, click on the stop share. And that brings me back to this home screen. And that would be the next person's turn. So it's pretty simple. And like most things in life, everything is easy when you know how to do it. I always give the one qualification, brain surgery is probably pretty hard every time. But uh, Zoom is not difficult. It just takes a little bit of practice. You do it two, three, four times, and then you're an old pro and it's not an issue at all. So I hope uh, you've all enjoyed this uh, explanation of how you can have a music club and in these trying times with COVID-19 uh, and the pandemic going on and not being able to really have uh, close encounters with our friends and, and relations, and maybe with the relations, that's all right, but certainly not with our friends. Here's a way that you can do it and using music as uh, the common denominator. Thank you very much, and I'll see you the next time.